Um, so now I want to surrender. You could prepare, you know, connection to Jan Busha, and who is also known as <laughs> nobody in person, I think. Yes. So you could see that handle, and now you could put even face to it. Um, so Jan will present on how to stay in control with all those tools you've mentioned, and he's environmental scientist and meteorologist. Uh, at the University of Tübingen, he loves free and open source software, and among many other things, he built a sensor system to measure natural CO2 emissions. Please give a round of applause to Jan. Yeah, thank you very much, Jarek, for the uh, introduction. So this is me. Um, initially, I named this talk Staying in Control of Your Scientific Data with Git Annex, but uh, also from yesterday, I learned again that scientific data is uh, widely different. Um, so let's just rename this talk to hashtag Git Annex All the Things. Um, I think this is fitting a bit better. Um, yeah, so Jarek already introduced me. Uh, I'm also a lot, of, uh, a lot into this maker stuff, 3D printing, CNC milling, and this is also what I did and learned during my PhD. And um, I've been using Git Annex in, in this whole process. Um, I'm fairly new to it, like I think two years maybe, um, but I absolutely love it. So a bit of background. Um, this is the Staatsach site. I also call it the Wonderland uh, sometimes. Uh, it's, a, it's a meadow. And uh, all these yellow dots you see here are spots where natural carbon dioxide comes uh, out of the ground. So there is a geological fault there, which basically means an earth crack. And uh, this forms a pathway um, for carbon dioxide to, to come um, to rise up from a magmatic chamber underneath. And um, this carbon dioxide has been mined industrially even for the last 100 years around and um, they made carbonated water from it or, or dry ice. But at some point, um, the yield stagnated, so they stopped. And, um, but the holes, uh, the, these so-called MOFETs, where CO2 comes out, they, they continue to reappear. And the project I'm working on in my PhD uh, has as goal to find out how much exactly that is. Does it change um, over time? Um, and this is, uh, you can read more about this site here in this um, uh, in this publication here. And so what do these uh, things look like? They're called mofets for some reason. Um, who knows Italian might know that mofetta means skunk. So stinky animal. And uh, they do in, in fact stink uh, sometimes because uh, uh, also some other gases come out of here. So there are big holes, um, small holes where you can only see that the gas rises up if, uh, if it's completely underwater. And, um, but this hole here, for example, emits, uh, just to get a feeling for it, half a ton, half a ton of CO2 per day. This one hole, and volume-wise, this is like four small offices, or driving uh, from here to Lisbon in Portugal with a, Portu <laughs> with a Porsche Cayenne, or half across the USA, Joey for you, <laughs> um, what it emits, uh, what the car would emit. And no, this is not what's causing uh, climate change, like the anthropogenic emissions are two orders of magnitude uh, larger, but still, this is a baseline we, uh, we have to consider. Yeah, so um, to measure what's happening there, um, you cannot just put one measurement device at one point into this field, because as you saw, it's very scattered and very heterogeneous. So um, no matter how expensive the device is that you will put there, it will not uh, be representative. So uh, our approach is to build a sensor network, and I did that. Uh, here you can see some of the, of the stuff uh, that I made for this. Um, it's a self-made um, printed circuit board. We use a microcontroller here. Um, I tried a lot of networking approaches, but in the end um, I found that keeping things simple is, is the best. So um, we use an ESP8266 uh, microcontroller, super cheap. It can do Wi-Fi. This is all we need. And, um, it communicates to a central station, which is a Raspberry Pi, powered by a ridiculous array of uh, solar panels. And um, this thing has a SIM card and um, can talk like this to the outside world. So um, to send 
the actual data I chose, and this is where the data comes in, uh, the super simple protocol MQTT. I don't know if you know it, but um, it's, a, it's a very, very simple and microcontroller friendly publish subscribe protocol. So it's basically like Mastodon, but for microcontrollers. So you can, um, you can publish a, an arbitrary binary message here. This is the message. So in my case, I just uh, I use a string, a number, and the unit to a certain string topic. This one is not binary. Uh, to a string topic. Um, and I chose rather long topics. These are also partly um, auto-generated um, because I wanted each, uh, each data set to be a bit um, yeah, self-describing. Uh, and the cool thing is you can just stream the data. I could do it right now. Um, and this is like a tail dash F. Uh, it's just, it spams your terminal. And uh, this is very helpful in the field to debug and also to just store the data. Like uh, I didn't even bother to, to write a script that uh, puts this into the nicer format. I'm just using this mosquito sub command line that just outputs this and I'm saving this. Uh, but not just this, because without time information, this doesn't help. So we add some time information here with the TS command. And <laughs> by the way, <laughs> you know who wrote this. I found this out <laughs> recently. It was Joey, apparently. <laughs> so thank you, Joey. Another tool that, <laughs> that helps me a lot of uh, avoid some headaches. So this is the data that I stored. And um, if you restart, uh, it compresses very well, because there is a lot of redundancy in there. And um, if you restart this process every couple of hours, you have basically have a file chunked read-only database, which is perfect for Git Annex. And I was really happy when I finally found Git Annex. Um, my solutions before uh, that I hand rolled with rsync to, to back it up and stuff, it, it was just not good. And Git Annex is, is really perfect for this. So now that I have these files, um, that are not a database. Yes, I know probably some of you really like databases. I also tried the database approach and, and failed miserably. Miserably, It was less, uh, just simple files that you can grab are just so much easier to handle, <laughs> I think. Um, but to make searching uh, this data um, a bit easier, you can store some um, pre-computed um, information in Git Annex metadata. So for example, uh, this uh, I made a script that runs regularly. If new files come in, um, they find out what kind of census um, are contained in this file, from when to when does it contain data, blah, blah, blah. And um, you can make, make a nice table here that shows you um, how long the date, the time span is, um, how many copies I have. For example, these files have seven copies. It's quite safe. I can be sure that uh, even if like the field explodes or university drowns, no way, the other way around. Uh, that, uh, that these files are safe. These two are only in the field. And um, yeah, if the field has a problem, I also have a problem. So this is uh, how the network looks like. Each of these uh, dotted arrows are Git Annex doing its thing. So we have the Raspberry Pi in the field that receives the data. I connected a flash drive to here. Git Annex uh, syncs all the data to there. Um, and the slow mobile connection, I can squeeze some files through there if, if I really need it, but uh, it's absolutely not enough uh, bandwidth to, to output. Also, the webcam images, it's just not possible to, to transfer that via 4G. Um, so this is where Git Annex's cool feature, the SneakerNet, comes in. For those who don't know what that is, it's basically uh, internet, but using your sneakers to transport information. And uh, this is what I do. I go into the field regularly, and um, I swap the flash, flash drive, uh, put a new one in, and um, Git Annex does its magic, uh, synchronizing all the metadata, all the locations where files are, and um, I can put it into arbitrarily many uh, hard disks, any servers, and can be really sure now that I finally don't lose data anymore, which uh, happened way too often before I had the system. And by the way, uh, thank you very much, Joey, for making this only in-group uh, matching expression a thing, because this helps. Um, then I can say everything in the field wants all files that are only in the field, and not that it tries to pull down data from here over the internet connection. That doesn't make any sense. So thank you very much, Joey, for this. Um, on, on another note, I'm also employed uh, at the University of Bonn, and my project there is um, something completely different, uh, measuring um, atmospheric stuff with multicopters. Uh, we are doing a summer school this um, August. By the way, the application deadline is today. So if you know anyone who is interested 
in, uh, in learning how to, to do atmospheric profiling, which is measuring things vertically, um, atmosphere, things, um, just uh, let, them, let them know. And our part is to, um, to do vertical measurements with multicopters. And I plan to um, just put a Raspberry Pi on there and also use Git Annex with, um, like to, to, swing, to get the data off, um, to keep an overview of, of all of this. And I mean, as it's also a, a bigger campaign, it's at the Forschungszentrum Jülich, by the way, some of you know it. And um, if some of you has any ideas or experiences with using uh, Git Annex or Datalet in a, in a lively measurement campaign, like where multiple people constantly add stuff, and um, I'm very happy to, to hear about it. Um, because I think it can also get out of hand quite quickly. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, otherwise I also um, played around with, um, with a lot of like, things that you can do with Git Annex. So um, this is where the hashtag uh, Git Annex all the things comes from. Um, so I wrote a Thunar plugin. Thunar is the file manager for the XFCE desktop environment. And um, I was already familiar with, uh, with his plugin system and, um, and tried um, to make something for this. And um, we also use, uh, in the family, we use Git Annex to synchronize our like, documents and, and pictures. And this is very helpful that you can just um, go into your file manager, right click, and then you have the Git Annex functionality right, uh, right under your mouse. So you can sync, you can add the file, get, drop, lock, and also um, this metadata uh, management. So you, there is this properties dialog where you have rudimentary support for uh, modifying the metadata per file. And um, I also built in a, um, this metadata view thing. I don't know if you know about it, but uh, it's very, very cool. Um, it means that Git Annex can make you a new orphaned branch that doesn't interfere with your main branch, and that is organized according to metadata. So for example, if you have a music collection and you have set metadata, um, like uh, artist and album, you can, tell, you can tell Git Annex, okay, make me a view where the first folder, uh, folder layer is the artist and the second uh, is the album. And the coolest thing about this is if you move things around and rename folders or um, in this view, Git Annex um, will update the metadata. So this is a pretty graphical way also of, of managing metadata. And I think this is really cool. With this plugin, uh, you can, you can um, also build these views interactively. Um, one other type of data that's also important to me, and probably also others, is uh, the time you spend on certain projects. Sometimes you're even obliged to, to track the time that you spend, uh, like if you have multiple employers, um, like me. <laughs> uh, and I tried several different solutions, like uh, maybe you know Time Warrior or uh, the Time Clock format, uh, so those of you who use Emacs or, uh, or HLedger. And um, I was not really satisfied with those. Um, and I thought, I want to have something that works everywhere. So a command line application even works on my phone. I use a Linux phone. Yes, Git Annex runs natively on it. Um, and I don't want to bother with this syncing stuff. Um, I don't want to, to manually reconcile merge conflicts on my phone. Really, I don't want to do this. So I thought, how about <laughs> we try to use Git Annex as, as a data backend for, for a time tracker, uh, just as a silly idea uh, if this would work. And it works. So this, this thing exists. And I'm, I'm quite proud of, uh, of the, it was my first like language parsing project. Uh, so you can do quite some fancy syntax here. So for example, track that I worked on the ICE since 16 o'clock for the distributes conference, give it a title that I did more foils. And it makes these boxes here. You can attach arbitrary meta metadata. It's just Git Annex metadata. You can put anything in there. And, and um, these time slots don't interfere with, interfere with each other. You can uh, track simultaneous things, which is a big limitation of many, many time tracking systems. They only allow you to do one thing. You cannot do anything uh, like in parallel. And um, so it's here, it's just, it's just uh, pip install away. Um, for me, this annex time lock thing uh, makes more green, <laughs> green check marks than, than the other solutions. So for me, it's good, especially the tracking of overlapping um, simultaneous uh, periods. And um, no merge conflicts. You say just annex time lock sync. It, it basically just, just uh, get annex sync in the background. No conflicts. It just works. 
and uh, this is very nice. So for example, this is uh, what you could do with it. You can track that you work, you can stop it, you can continue it, you can say that you work for four hours at home with this client on that project and uh, you can specify times, uh, you can search the events by metadata and by time and um, you can export it to JSON to time clock and do the further analysis in age ledger. Of course you can also modify uh, data, you can uh, remove and just sync it up. So I'm quite happy with how this turned out. It's still missing a bit of like nice presentation in a, in a like Gantt chart style. Uh, that would be really cool. I haven't had the time uh, to do this yet. Um, another fun experiment um, was, I think some tasks in Git Annex repo management are a bit tedious um, and repetitive, like um, keeping the names of your remotes like readable. I, I like to Put to, to make the descriptions kind of readable. I often look at Git Annex info output um, to, to see what is this. I mean, I have so many repos. I, I want the Git Annex info output to be to be nice, and so renaming repositories, all this preferred content stuff. It's so powerful, but it's a bit hard to debug, I think, and um, to see. So I tried um, starting this uh, Git Annex control center, which is a terminal ap application, and I, I this is my first. Uh, try with this textual Python framework, if you know it. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing that basically makes a website in your terminal. Yes, this is a scroll bar. Yes, you can scroll with your mouse and it's even smooth. Like, uh, <laughs> yes, you, you can have tabs, you can have buttons, you have... Uh, and it's quite, it, like, the API is really good. It's, it's not hard to program. It, it, GUI programming is fun again with this. Uh, you can have keyboard shortcuts, dark mode, light mode. You can have uh, like a file structure. So it's and and here are checkboxes. This thing is really crazy, and um, this is just a mock-up. But it would be really cool to have this super cross-platform thing to just ease the management of some uh, Git Annex tasks a bit. So this is maybe also uh, something we can d discuss for the hackathon. You can also just uh, pip install it and, and uh, run it with git annex cc. It can't do anything yet, uh, but you can click around and try this text thrashing thing out. It's really fun. Okay, and now, as a last remark, something uh, I just want to put out here. So there is this open timestamps thing um, that nobody knows about, pretty much. Who knows it? Yeah, because I posted it, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So what you can do with open timestamps, which is really cool, I think, is um, you can you can attach a fancy timestamp to your GPG signature. I mean, we know we should all GPG sign uh, our Git commits, but with open timestamps, this adds another um, signature to this, which is a timestamp, and um, this means. Uh, and this is a technically very, very robust timestamp. It's not something where you have to trust anyone, uh, which is very, very valuable. And it, this open timestamps thing has Git Annex support. So um, if you have timestamped your commits, you can extract a proof um, of time existence, so when that file was created or existed back then, uh, for any Git tracked file and also annexed file. Um, why is this important to, to be able to prove that something existed? Think of any legal situations, maybe even like uh, you take pictures for, uh, of, of, the, of a new apartment that you want to rent and you want to prove that this damage really existed three years ago and that you did, just didn't take this photo yesterday. And, um, or maybe um, if you want to prove that a data set really existed at that time. Um, this can be uh, necessary in some situations. And, uh, but I, I have to um, do a trigger warning here. It uses the Bitcoin blockchain on the niche. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know some, of, uh, some people don't like blockchain. I'm also not really a blockchain enthusiast. Um, but I think this might be one of the only real good <laughs> applications of blockchain to do this timestamping right. Um, yeah, and also maybe in, this, in, the, um, in the context of this XZ vulnerability that we all know of, um, had they all um, used, I think they didn't use GPG uh, signatures for their commits, right? That's uh, one first problem. And um, had they also timestamped the, uh, their commits, 
and um, think about uh, when the maintainer's key would have been uh, compromised, the GPG key, um, the, the attacker could have uh, forged signatures with this key, um, but if you have timestamp commits where also the GPG signature is timestamped, uh, you cannot forge a timestamp into the past. So uh, this is another layer of security. Uh, if you have uh, timestamped your signature, even if the key is compromised, you can at least prove the past signatures um, that they are still correct. Yeah, and that's it for me. My 20 minutes are over. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm looking forward to the questions in the panel discussion.